everyone! For this week's assignment, we're going to learn how to make our own instruments at home. I'm really excited to share all these DIY tips with you, and I hope you have a great time making your crafts at home. Let's go! First, a paper towel roll or a toilet paper roll. It's the difference between having a really low kazoo and a really high kazoo. Some rubber bands and some wax paper because this is how you make the buzzing end of it. And this is how you tie it on. And then finally some crayons or markers to just decorate your kazoo hood. First we're going to take our rolls and we are going to take a small piece of wax paper. Tear it off carefully. tear this into smaller pieces to cover the top with. You want enough to cover the hole on top, so that looks good. Then you're going to take a rubber band and you're going to twist it around the end of your zoo. Sounds like you're good, huh? 
Got my shakers. Oh, I got this everywhere. Let me clean up for a second. I'm back. This is the fun part because we get to make our shakers. We're gonna lie the egg down inside of the two spoons. And then we're gonna tape the maracas together. Tape the spoons together. So, I'm gonna start with the egg on one spoon just to make sure that they get totally connected. Circles. Call a semicircle from that class. 
one side has to be fully like a semicircle, and then the other side you're gonna cut into a smaller piece. So this one looks pretty good. I'm gonna use this. I'm just gonna cut them off the nasty edge a little bit more. This is my semicircle now, and then this one I'm actually gonna cut a strip to hold the string board up. You can maybe cut one semicircle in half. Then you'll end up with a little skinny strip like this. You're going to take this strip and you're going to fold it into thirds. So a third is a fraction that has three parts. Three equal parts. One, two in the middle, and then three on the end. You want to fold it so that you fold those ends towards the middle. One like this. So it goes right into that middle line, and then the other on the other side, just folding it around. Almost like when you wrap your arms around your body and you give yourself a hug. That's what this part's going to be made of. And then you can tape this part shut. This is a little springboard. You're going to put this springboard on the bottom of your guitar, right above the hole. And you're going to use some tape to make sure it stays put. Then you're going to take your semicircle and you're going to place it right on top. The semicircle is going to go right on top of the little springboard you have. And this will help hold the guitar rubber band strings off the instrument so they can make a better sound. So I'm going to take this tape, lock it right on top of my fingerboard like that, and then I'm going to place this right on top. So it looks like this now. Next step. In the video, they stretched the rubber band all the way around the cereal box, which I can actually do. You can use different thicknesses and colors and different types. Then this one is going to go over it. And you can get more rubber bands that make it even stretchier. When you're all done, you've put all the rubber bands around your box, you can start to play it. The way you can play your guitar, um, holding it like a regular one, and you can pluck the strings, you can also put your fingers on the fingerboard, if you remember what we talked about in ukulele with the different spots you can put it on. This is actually my favorite one. This is really fun to do. Um, just be careful when you're using the scissors and be careful when you're using the rubber bands. <laughs>
but this is a super fun cereal box guitar. Awesome. Now for our final instrument, we're going to make the xylophone. We're going to need some glass jars and we're going to need some water and something to pour and measure the water with. You can just make a xylophone out of glass jars that you have around and they'll have the pitch will go up and down. If you pick a really big jar, those pitches will be lower, but if you pick a lot of really tiny jars, those pitches are going to be higher. We can use water to help change the pitches of the instruments. So let's start with our high note. Our high note is actually not going to have any water in it at all. When you don't add water to it, that's the highest pitch it will be, but as you add more and more water, it will get deeper and deeper. Let's go to our next note. But really, you can just experiment with it. Oops, I think I put too much in. As you're going, you want to be able to test it and make sure that you're listening for what you want. So, this one sounds like G, so this one has to be A. So it just needs to go down a little bit. Almost there. We want it to go down to ba. Can you tell me when you think it's hit it? Let's pour the water first. Now we're just going to test and listen if we're here at the right spot. Ba, ba, e flat. You might want to experiment with using some warm water because it makes a little bit of a different sound. When you pour your water into the glasses, make sure it's nice and warm. So my next note, do, 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 do. I'm going to fill it up all the way to the right there. That sounds good. Yay! 
If you're using glass jars like what I have, I think it's really important to use hot water. Um, I'm going to look into the science of why and tell you tomorrow, but I think if you use hot water... If you use warm water, it's going to excite the parts of the glass even more. When you get older and you start talking about science and atoms, the atoms are moving faster because as you increase temperature, they have more energy. And that makes a louder sound. For now, let's play a song that everybody knows and everybody loves. Do you know it? Thanks everybody, have a great day, I love you, have a great summer.